Uh, I used to work as a trainee nurse in a psychiatric hospital in Dublin many years ago. And I saw every weekend when the families or the guardians of the residents or the patients, as they were called at the time, every time they arrived at the weekend, they were filled with love and there was warmth and there was all those things that come from parents. But the moment any of the residents implied in the slightest that they had an aspiration toward intimacy or toward sexuality, they were shut down as if it was an aberration, as if it was something deeply dysfunctional. And I thought to myself, it's extraordinary that because we are somebody's parent or somebody's guardian, we have the right to apply a fascistic morality in someone else because the state allows us to or because a doctor allows us to. So I wanted to write something about that. Hi, I'm Mo Dunford. I'm the actor. I play Patrick. I'm Terry McMahon, the writer-director. How are you doing? Thank you. Fuck that we didn't fucking applaud with that for me. <laughs> it's such a magnificent per performance. How, how long did it take you to film? Did you do many rehearsals or, or did you um, launch into it? It's, it's so emotionally raw, it seems like it would be difficult to do those scenes many times. It was 16 days we shot this movie in. That's incredible. Uh, again, with your permission, I'll just explain how Mo got cast, because Mo was unknown, and is still unknown, but I don't think for long. But uh, Mo was not famous enough for the financiers. He didn't have enough cachet for them to cash in on. And they had a whole bunch of blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pretty boys coming into audition, as if they were auditioning. <laughs> But we needed somebody particularly ugly. <laughs> somebody, with, somebody who was broken. Somebody w not just broken, but had the ability to be broken inside. And all these blonde haired pretty boys were coming in, and I kept on trying to avoid concealing the fact that I was puking into my fucking mouth looking at them. And then Mo Dunford came in. And when Mo came in, I thought, OK, there's something fascinating about this guy. I'm not quite sure what it is, but firstly, he clearly had an evident talent, but also he had a knowledge that most people don't have. And we didn't know at the time why, but he'll explain to you in a minute why. But the financiers, we put him on tape, and the financiers, understandably, went, he's not famous enough. And we put more of him on tape, and they said, can he be soft? And I said, what the fuck does that mean, can he be soft? And they said, can he be soft? We don't know if he can be soft or not. So myself and Mo were coming back, and we didn't know each other at all. And I have this beautiful dog at home. And Ireland were playing a football match on the night, and there was a whole bunch of friends coming around for beers. And I thought, I'm going to bring this poor bastard home. I'm going to get him drunk. And I'm going to put him on the couch with my dog. So we got him drunk. We put him on the couch with the dog. We rubbed ham on the side of his face. The dog licked him like she was in love. <laughs> we filmed it. We sent it into the financiers. And they went, he's hired. <laughs> so it was a fucking dog who cast him. <laughs> biggest fucking psychiatric institution in the world right now. <laughs> run by madmen, run by crazy bastards in white coats that are trying to kill all of us. That's not a joke. Sadly, it's not a joke at all. So yes, the film is very much a metaphor for Ireland, the kind of scum who are determining the future of people against their will. But the hope is that it works also as a love story with the possibility that if we fight back and reach for intimacy, we might fell these fuckers. Now, the idea behind the robe is that some people who live alone, the moment they come in from their job, it's like a uniformity that they strip off them. But because there's nobody in their house to engage with, or nobody on any level to see them, they actually reduce themselves to a piece of craft cloth wrapped around them. So Patrick's Day is a story of a young 26-year-old virgin schizophrenic who every year, <laughs> every year uh, gets missing. Every year, excuse me, every year goes to the St. Patrick's Day Parade in, in Dublin for his birthday, which also happens to be Patrick's Day. And uh, on you this... You did understand that when she said short. Yes. Okay. And he gets missing from his mother, and he falls in love with this suicidal air hostess, and his, his whole world changes. So his mother doesn't like this at all and tries to break them up. So that's what it's about. Well, then let me ask you a question back. 
Is the ending real? A movie about delusions. Is the ending real? No. <laughs> I, I love that. What, what happens is, every time we screen this film, the romantics in the audience believe the ending without hesitation. Because the odd cynical prick who goes, excuse me, that was a movie about delusions. Is the ending a delusion? Fuck off, it's real. It's romantic. <laughs> Mo, Mo uh, would yeah. you like to address a little bit more about the, the content? Do you think that was a delusion at the end? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, I've got a little boy, and I always want to see him at the end of the day, so it's real to me. <laughs> but uh, just the thing about Terry, this guy's changed my life, and uh, I don't think he's given enough credit. They're, they're slowly realizing the power, powerful force that he is now in Irish cinema back home, but as a director, I mean, you just trust the man. He makes you feel like you can do anything. He's one of them. I think he's one of the world's best, and the guy's changed my life, so. Don't fucking applaud. Do you have any idea how much money I have to give him for that line? Outside of the film, this guy's direction, all the way through the film, he makes the actors feel like they can achieve anything, that they're fearless, that they have nothing to lose. He can make any actor do things that they didn't think possible. This guy here. The whole function of the film, if function is a word you can use with film, is to hopefully empower somebody to feel like they can reach out for intimacy. Despite the fear, despite all the reasons why it makes no sense, just to reach out for intimacy. And we have a shot that's repeated twice in the film, which is Mo and Catherine Walker, our suicidal flight attendant. And in both instances, they connect. They reach out and they connect. And that simple notion of having the courage to connect, despite the fact that there's a thousand reasons not to. <laughs>